I am a junkie, a fiend, an addict, a treasure goblin. I can't get enough of the gameplay loop provided by the ARPG genre, and even more so after finally getting hands on time with Diablo 4. While the wait is slowly coming to an end, what's an addict to do in the meantime? Quitting cold turkey is not an option, and something is needed to feed the craving. Luckily, many, many other developers are just like us and have those cravings too, and turn their addiction into games that you can play right now. So if you're like me and you just need something to hold you over until Diablo 4 is out, here are six games you can play right now to satisfy your craving while you wait. Blessed Mother, save us. Among ancient ruins, evil grows once more. Diablo 2 lovers rejoice! If Diablo 2 Resurrected has become stale for you, it might be time to check out Path of Exile. Grinding gear games clearly set out to entice the Diablo 2 diehards with Path of Exile, but aims for more complex and robust skill, itemization, and in-game systems. The free-to-play PoE takes ARPGs to another level with massive passive skill trees, tons of unique gear, ever-evolving skills to utilize through skill gems, loads of content, and an in-game design to keep you playing and playing. Don't fear the free-to-play model, though. Path of Exile's monetization system is purely cosmetic on every level. You won't find a single pay-for-power avenue in the game. I won't lie, though. If you truly get deeper into the end-game, you will be enticed to open your wallet to expand your game's stash. From in-game zones called maps, to heist missions, to an endless dungeon that gets progressively harder as you delve deeper, you will surely run out of steam before you complete everything this game has to offer. And if you're a seasoned ARPG player, leagues will entice you to do it all over again. Leagues in Path of Exiles are essential to the longevity of player engagement, as these, similar to Diablo games, start your characters from nothing. Through leagues, players will be able to engage in the newest content added to the game. While Last Epoch is still currently in the Early Access beta, it fits itself nicely right in between Path of Exile and Diablo 2. Whereas Path of Exile prides itself on the complexity of its systems, Last Epoch aims to ensure players are informed on its own less complex designs to keep you in-game and slaying monsters. Last Epoch sets itself from the others from its weapon crafting and focus on in-game dungeons. Crafting in Last Epoch at first can be a bit off-putting as you face the inevitable disappointment of rendering a piece of gear worthless due to the roll of the dice. Rest assured that as you're playing, gathering new loot and materials, this crafting system becomes the optimal avenue to how your power grows in the game. There's nothing quite like rolling the exact stat you need that sends your build over the edge. Newcomers to Last Epoch can even use the various build guides that exist as there is a dedicated player base who have done all the homework for you and can guide you through the endgame. Speaking of the endgame, Last Epoch has what they call monoliths and echoes. This is somewhat similar to mapping in Path of Exile, where you'll see a web of maps that you load into to slay monsters, complete simple objectives, and acquire loot. The echo system in this game allows you to target farm specific gear pieces and materials you need by giving you a preview of what rewards you'll obtain upon completion. This is great when you're feeling light in specific areas of your build or are just low on resources. We paid a heavy price, but the trap worked. You seem surprised. It's been a while since we've had a win. Guns. Grim Dawn has guns. That's a nice change of pace, right? When all other ARPGs are about wands and swords and other various sorts of fantasy elements, Grim Dawn lets you shoot the undead right in the brain. Okay, that's not the only reason it's on the list. In a world where Diablo 3 took a more colorful aesthetic or cartoony look, Grim Dawn brings out the greediness of a post-apocalyptic world and yet another game where humanity is in peril and you must use your powers to vanquish evil. And yes, it's got scepters, swords, jewelry, and all sorts of manners that you can expect from ARPG itemization. The deep character customization provided by Cray Entertainment makes for a satisfying journey to the level cap of 100. Stat bonuses on gear earned while playing will take your character's power to newer heights. 
For the end game, players can look forward to modes like the Crucible or the Shattered Realm, which is an endless dungeon that gets progressively more difficult as you progress. One of the more satisfying parts of Grim Dawn are the sheer amounts of builds players can put together. Expect to spend lots of time swapping playstyles and even creating new characters to experience new ways to play with all the tools available at your disposal. Grim Dawn also has one final thing that a lot of ARPGs refuse to have, auto loot crafting materials. So simple, yet such such a wonderful feature. The corruption has reached the colonies. If we don't stop it, humanity will have nowhere to hide. Have you ever wanted to play Diablo in space? Well, that's what you'll get with Superfuse. Sorta. Superfuse, which is currently only available on Steam, is in a very early access state. Like most ARPGs of its kind, Superfuse is a game that owes its addictive gameplay loop and loot system to Diablo 2. This isn't a knock against the game by any stretch, as the devs actually wear that as a badge of honor and wholly lean into it. Go time! Let's get to work. Superviews manages to set itself apart in two ways, its theme and its innovative skill system. Wearing a comic book style coat of paint, Superfuse is set in the distant future within our own solar system. You'll be sent all across various planets to fight hordes of gross mutated monsters in order to bring down the man in a dystopia where billionaire corporate rulers have a vice grip around the survivors on the now dead Earth. On top of this setting, Superfuse's skill system can become incredibly addicting as there are so many cool and unique ways to customize your skills and slot fuses to grow your power and drastically change how your skills behave. Turn a basic fireball into a giant blob of flames that arc into the air at a slower pace but for massive damage increase. Getting creative is a must when slotting these fuses. One thing to keep in mind at the same time of this recommendation is that Superfuse's early access is very limited on content. While they are still updating the game, the end game is in its infancy and can leave much to desire as you get more and more familiar with it. The Lost Ark is now but a myth. After several years in testing markets, Amazon unleashed Lost Ark to Western markets. Upon release, there was a major surge in popularity and, to this day, Lost Ark still retains a very healthy player population. While there aren't a ton of similarities to any Diablo game, considering it's an MMO first, Lost Ark has what makes games like Diablo just so damn fun. Tons of monsters on screen and a myriad of skills that decimate them all in a satisfying blaze of glory. When you start Lost Ark, you essentially start with most of your skills available to use in exchange for a different type of power growth system where you level specific skills. Upon reaching the end game, you can look forward to doing things like epic, large-scale dungeons, monster raids, daily and weekly quests that send you all over this vast world this game has, and a gear leveling system to even further push the boundaries of your power. Though free to play, Lost Ark does offer players the option to buy in-game currency and crafting materials that can drastically improve the grind for for increasing your gear score. So while there are some slight pay to win avenues in Lost Ark, everything can be easily achieved without spending a dime. The people pray for strength and guidance. Ah. They should pray for the mercy of a swift death. By now you might be saying, well, obviously, hear me out. Yes, of course Diablo 3 is the most recent mainline entry to the franchise, but when was the last time you played it? Diablo 3 is currently in its 28th season. With it came arguably the biggest update since, well, the game got good. Enter the Altar of Rites, Diablo 3's season 28 theme and main new mechanic. The Altar acts as a new passive skill tree. Do certain activities in the game to acquire specific materials, then sacrifice them to gain cool new traits like spawn pylon and shrine effects when consuming a potion or having pets pick up all the trash loot on the ground and auto dismantling the gear for materials. Finishing the entire tree even gets you double primal ancient drops and some cool wings. The Altar of Rite makes for a really fun season that shifts the way you play Diablo 3. If there ever was a time to return to the game, it's now. Especially considering, per Blizzard, Diablo 3 will not see any new content updates after Diablo 4 launches. Instead, it will only be recycling past seasons going forward. Let's see what we can do. 
And that's it. Off you go. Take this information, figure out what best suits your needs and what will satisfy the urge, and in no time you'll find the wait for Diablo 4 is becoming that much easier. You can be certain that IGN will be covering Diablo 4 up until its release this summer, and even more so as the game evolves over its lifespan. Until then, for all your Diablo 4 cravings, stick with IGN. Now, our true world 